Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to our Fallout 4 deep dive series that focuses in on locations, factions, and individual characters within the Fallout universe. Now, before we start getting into the details of today's episode, please consider subscribing to the channel if you're new here for more Fallout content in the future, and be sure to check out our Twitch, Kick, and YouTube live stream channels all for future live streams, and that's all linked down in the description below. And if you're coming back, thank you very much. It's great to have you back. Make sure you guys like the video and share it with a friend. And if you've not joined our Discord or other social medias to keep up with future content, uploads, and live streams, make sure you guys check the description below so you can join our Discord and follow me on Twitter and whatnot. But without further ado, in today's episode, we will be focusing in on, in my opinion, one of the most memorable companions in Fallout 4, and that would be Kate. But without further ado, let's get into some Fallout 4. During the Soul Survivor's adventures throughout the Commonwealth, we'll discover we'll find ourselves stumbling upon a location known as the Combat Zone. Now, the Combat Zone is within the Theater District of Boston is built and is built within the Orpheum Theater. Now, the Orpheum Theater was a pre-war theater venue in Boston, and it's, it had been there well before the bombs ever fell. Now, upon entry to the Orpheum Theater or the Combat Zone, the sole survivor is going to encounter many raiders. Now, once the sole survivor has cleared those raiders out, we then will have an opportunity with interaction with a ghoul named Tommy. Now, Tommy is the owner and ruler or runner of the combat zone, and we'll talk about him a little bit here in a little bit, but it's during this conversation and interaction that we're introduced to our soon-to-be companion, Kate. You ain't bringing in caps, little. All right, guys, so we're going to dive into Kate's background, but as always, I want to note that we're referencing the Fallout Wiki for this section, as always, so make sure you guys support this website. It's super awesome, full of a lot of different fandoms, um, and the info is dug up and written up by some amazing, passionate fans of Fallout, so make sure you guys go over there, check it out, support it. Um, but Kate, she was born into a distant and abusive family of Irish descent around the years 2260 or 2261. She remembers her parents would routinely abuse her both physically, mentally, and verbally for the first part of her life. She attempted to run away twice. The first time she ran away, her parents locked her away in their shed. And then the second time, well, they broke her legs to teach her a lesson. The abuse eventually left Kate believing that she was a mistake at, at being alive, but somehow she managed to convince herself that her parents must love her to some degree since they hadn't kicked her out from their house yet. Well, upon her 18th birthday, that though, this veil was lifted very, very quickly when her parents would wake her up and slap a shock collar around her neck and then sold her into slavery without any appearance of regret or second thoughts. For the following five years, the young adult Kate was used as a tool of entertainment by slavers for a variety of purposes that she refuses to tell anyone, including the sole survivor. While it wrecked her emotionally and warped her personality as any major series of traumatic events would, Kate ultimately overcame. She was able to push through her large level of resentment towards her captors and managed to learn a few tricks of their trade. She learned how to steal caps from sleeping men after they used her for their pleasures and was eventually able to buy her own freedom. With 23 years worth of pent-up anger and fury, the first thing she did was track down her parents that sold her into slavery just so she could empty both barrels of her shotgun into them. Even with her freedom and revenge against her parents fulfilled, Kate never found a true sense of fulfillment from this action, and in order to cope, she found herself diving into bottles of alcohol using Kim's as well. And specifically, Psycho was her favorite go-to. And she did this just so she could simply forget her past for a little while. 
At some point, our companion found our way to Tommy Lundgren, the owner and operator of the combat zone within the theater. We previously mentioned him in our opener, where Kate became a cage fighter and fought to provide her with the funds for her alcohol and chem abuse to distract her from her past. In this section of the video, we'll be discussing the direct interactions the sole survivor has with Kate as far as through our adventures that we had personally as well as some that you could possibly experience um, and her personality traits. I, I believe that uh, this is like a good way to combine these two things into one section as you know we get a good glimpse at her personality through our endeavors with with k throughout the uh the commonwealth um so um i i really really truly think that her, com, like kate as a companion and npc are summed up very well through understanding her personality um she's a really complex character i think uh, but but anyways once w whenever we meet kate in the combat zone She's offered up directly front by Tommy to follow us as a companion. And even Kate is confused by this. Talk about this. Come over here. Show us you don't mean no harm. Is it over? What's up, Tommy? Well, that could have gone worse. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. Seemed quite the performance from where I was standing. Are you fucking high or something? Why am I asking? She probably oh, is. You are. We're still winning the fight, wasn't I? You're strung out and getting sloppy. Of course, I suppose you ain't got to worry about that now. Seems this one just put us out of business. I'm not sure if I should kiss you or have my little bird here feed you your own entrails. I told you to quit calling me that. I'm sorry. It just seemed like you guys might be in trouble. Trouble? Nah. But keeping those idiots entertained was <laughs> with the lights on. Not exactly sure what we're going to do now. To hell with them. More will come. Just need a quick breather and I'll be ready to go. Oh, breather? What? So you can slam more of that junk into your arm now? No, you know what? I think this was a blessing in disguise. You caught the end of that bout. What'd you think of Kate's work? Ability. To me, and to yourself. So, here's what I'm thinking. What say I let you take over her contract? She goes with you, watches your back, Look, you'd be doing me a favor while I try to get the place back in order. What do you say? Me? And him? Why? Why would you want her to go with me? Yeah, Tommy. Just why the hell are you trying to get rid of me? Maybe I just think you deserve some time off. Maybe I like this one's face. I don't know. I usually got a good sense about this sort of thing. So what mm. do you say? Seems like he's trying to pass her off. What's your thoughts, Kate? I'd like to know what Kate thinks. Don't I get a say in all this? That ain't how a contract works. Besides, you really want to stay here? No audience, no caps, no one to talk to, but yours truly. Uh, Jesus, point taken. Gotta go. So, she's on board. Uh, now what about you? <laughs> I know you guys just love the, the mic burps. I'm sure it makes you just sure. so happy so to be here. Like Good. <laughs> it's settled then. And here, take this the purse from the last fight exterminators fees hey what exactly are you gonna do without me here you don't need to worry about me i'll get this place set up right maybe find a less blood-soaked clientele then get the hell out of here you ain't welcome anymore little bird you're a real son of a bitch you know that dang man don't have to tell me booted her out cool um, but I think ultimately, I think Tommy knows um, what he's doing and doing that for her. Um, as a companion, she's extremely skilled with her abilities in lock picking, AP boost when you gain max affinity through the trigger rush perk, um, which is a really good perk. Um, to obtain that, though, that max affinity, you must do her optional quest, uh, Benign Intervention, which I think is an incredible quest and to get there that whole process is like a really fulfilling experience as a player during this part of the game 
Th but throughout her travels with the sole survivor, we learn about Kate's trauma and pass through dialogue options. Building up to these dialogue options, though, we learn that Kate is a deceptively convincing, tough Irish gal, but deep down is a broken woman with a lifetime of misery behind her. And we talked about some of those in the background section, so we're not going to dive back into that. But I do think it's important to note that certain interactions, things that happen in our lives, shape us, shapes our personality. And I do think it would be a huge disservice to Kate to not acknowledge that many, many of those things definitely shaped her. When Kate begins to open up to the sole survivor, we can tell and we learn that she's extremely scared to do so. As everyone she's ever been vulnerable with has betrayed her trust in some way or another. Kate is in fact a character that the sole survivor can romance, um, but it takes a lot of work to get to that point. You have to constantly, you know, be reassuring of her and her existence um, and make her understand that her experiences are true, they're real, um, that she is nothing, there is nothing wrong in how she's feeling, that it's perfectly normal and appropriate how she feels about her experiences from her past. Um, once we um, get her to a point where we're going in a path of being able to rom romance her through dialogue options, she will um, approach us about curing her of her addiction, like assisting her with her addiction, and that will open up the quest line benign intervention. Hey there. Quit stalling. I need you to help me. Please. Yeah, anything you need. Anything you need, Kate. I was hoping you'd say that. We're friends now, which means I can trust you with anything. I'm also hoping it means you've got me back. Because I need it now more than ever. I got you, Kate. I'm, I'm sick. But I don't think I can hide it from you anymore. Okay, calm down and take a deep breath. If you're sick, I want to help you. Believe me, I want your help, but I'm scared. I'm scared that you'll hear the truth and that I'll lose you as a friend. God, I'm making a hell of a mess of this. I didn't think it would be so tough. You'll never lose me as a friend, no matter what you say. Damn you for being so nice to me. I started this, so I suppose I need to finish it. Ever since I left home, I've been using Psycho. I don't know why I'm still taking that crap, but I can't stop. And believe me, I've tried. I can't even go a day without it anymore, and I'm fucking sick and tired of it. I've even been doing it behind your back. Sneaking doses when I think you aren't looking. Worst of all, it's been making me sick. I've been spitting blood, and I don't feel right inside. I need to get this shite out of me system before I wind up dead. Can your psycho addiction be cured? Normally a wasteland doc can handle it, but I've been using the stuff so damn long they can't help me anymore. There's only one other way I know, but it's not gonna be easy. It's like a vault. There's supposed to be a vault somewhere out here. Yeah, vault, vault ninety five. Vault ninety five. I've heard that Vault Ted used it for some kind of social experiment. Stuck a bunch of junkies inside to poke and prod. Well, they supposedly had some special method to clean up those blokes in there. Some kind of a machine or something. If we could get inside. Maybe that machine could help me. Now, through this quest line, the sole survivor will allow Kate to make her request to be cured of her addiction to chems and alcohol. Um, and whenever she's opening up to the sole survivor about this, she emphasizes her issues with her health. It's declining due to her dependency on psycho specifically, but chems, ultimately just drugs and alcohol. Um, if we choose to assist Kate, we can take her over to Vault 95 and clear the vault which contains a device that just might assist with a desire for a cure. Now, whenever we initially discover the area, Kate is very hesitant. She's not sure if she knows, you know, she doesn't know if she can do it. And we can choose to encourage her or, you know, be negative about the decision for, you know, and kind of like lead her in the change in her mind. You know, we have a lot of dialogue options. Me and the type of person I am as a player, I encouraged her to go for it. Um, and if you want to see that part of our playthrough, you can go check it out over on our channel. It's called Kate's uh, Request, I think is what it's called. 
but it's like episode it's in the 20s um we're pushing 50 episodes now by the time this goes up on the channel but it's like in the 20s so it was quite a bit ago in our playthrough but even though she's gone through these very extremely challenging difficult trials What's really fascinating about Kate is that she has yet to cave to the difficulty of life. We learn, we do learn from dialogue options that she has looked down the barrel of her shotgun well more than one time and has yet to pull the trigger, which obviously is a good positive thing. Um, and I know that's a dark subject matter to touch on, but I think it's important to emphasize that I think deep down somewhere in there, Kate knows there's a purpose. She has meaning. And she's still trying to find it. And I think that is displayed through that interaction and that discussion with her. I'm glad you're all right. I was worried about Kate to me is one of my favorite companions throughout my adventures with Fallout 4. She's someone that is way more relatable than we even realize. She's experienced loss, betrayal, pain and suffering, both mentally and physically. The true definition of it is what it is that I hear so many people say after experiencing something tragic. However, she is a true representation of overcoming adversary in life. Her methods of overcoming some of these situations were not exactly ideal, but she was able to overcome and break free from those that had her enslaved and gain the ability to escape her captors. While she did gain revenge, she learned her issues would not be solved simply by removing her parents who betrayed her, which I feel like through different means, obviously not, you know, but uh, people learn that lesson daily. Individually, we have to work through our issues and seek improvement to do better than those who did us wrong, which is a lesson that I feel Kate is constantly learning. She overcomes her addiction through trusting someone who clearly expresses they care, assuming the player chooses to do so, and becomes a much better and happier individual because of it. Does she still have issues and problems and challenges? Absolutely. But she still becomes happier day over day over day. So, what are your thoughts on Kate? Is she as relatable to you as a player as she is to me? Did you assist her with overcoming her addiction? Let me know down in the comments below. I would love to know your thoughts and your takes on Kate as a companion and as a character. If you enjoyed this episode of our Fallout 4 deep dive segment, please be sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new here. And if you've not done so already, please consider becoming a member of our Patreon if you'd like to support future videos like this one. But until next time, guys, stay safe out there in the waste. Keep your Nuka Cola stocked and your Mintats ready. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Fallout 4 Deep Dives. Well, that could have gone worse. Yep. I don't know. Seemed quite the performance from where I was standing. Are you fucking high or something?